<coughs> hello p4 so we're going to start the 4b textbook so uh, we're going to go through this chapter uh, there will be some worksheets and there'll also be a Google form um, for some questions as well. I'll upload this PDF, but also you can um, log on to Docs PC and uh, see uh, what I'm seeing now. So um, let's uh, start off with, so we uh, get changed. So apart from a laptop computer, which obviously we use, what do we know about other computers? So we've got a video to watch. Hi, kid. Have you ever seen this supercomputer? This is the brand new supercomputer from Japan. And there are only three in Hong Kong. How can I recommend this computer? Okay, so anyone got uh, any ideas? Let's have a look first at um, some of the different types of computers, some which you might um, be already uh, common with. So processing power distinguishes computers from microcomputers, mini computers, mainframe computers, and supercomputers. So processing power is the key thing which separates them. So microcomputers are what's most widely used in home, office, and school. And these can include uh, desktop computers um, or computable computers or even tablets and notebooks. So we use at, at school a, a Chromebook, but this, uh, and then a majority of the teachers use laptops and a few of the computers are desktops. This picture here is of a desktop computer. You then have mini computers that can process a couple of users' commands at the same times. They're no longer really popular uh, because micro computers have got so powerful. So mini computers were used um, when internet sharing wasn't as, uh, as common and when microcomputers weren't as useful. Now we've got this picture, which is a mainframe computer. These are used to, uh, that can make processes of thousands of users um, of commands at the same time. So this, for example, is uh, used by airlines, banks, government bodies, um, big organizations which are all using the same, uh, need the same thing. A really good example of this is to think of an airline. When you uh, scan your ticket to check into your um, airport, uh, at the airport, uh, somebody behind the desk is inputting then your passport information or other information. And then there's lots of people on that desk. So all those people are inputting all that information into one mainframe computer and then people in other parts of the airport can then all see that information at the same time if it was just on one microcomputer and you were having to move it from each one you might uh mistakes could happen with not making sure you've got the uh, right information so the last one here is a supercomputer. You can see a big picture here. It's an entire room. These computers have the highest processing power in the world, and they're most uh, used in industries that demand huge computation works. 
such as military, engineering, aerospace, and meteorology. So aerospace and meteorology, that is uh, looking at the study of uh, space or engineering in the space, where you have to take in huge, huge amounts of information, um, more than millions of data points, and it's trying to uh, work them out or estimate uh, mathematical models. This is the highest level of computing and maths, really. So the processing power of a su uh, supercomputer is really fast. We can look at the applications of uh, computers in daily life. Here's another short video. Excellent. So you can see there um, we've uh, got tapping in now at our school. Um, if you're paying stuff, when they scan the information, phone calls, even your washing machine, and knowing when to start certain cycles, and obviously playing games. So uh, smart cards can be used for attendance. Also, we can use uh, Octopus works the same way. It stores an amount of money on the cards. And we have some different, uh, an ebook reader, an instant dictionary, ATM, um, a electric microwave or a rice cooker. We've even got video phones. Uh, PDAs are an old form of technology. Um, Electronic game player, MP3, these are kind of all in smartphones now. So let's try this uh, Discovery Playground. This is a game. We'll do the level one, and then if you want to do the level um, uh, more, you can do it at school uh, when you or, uh, log on. So come and accept my chance, see if you can shoot the target. Let's start. Let's just work it out. According to the process, uh, process and power computer, how many categories are they divided? Which category does tablet computers belong to? How many users can use a mini computer at the same time? Because we know it's the smallest amount. How many users can use mainframe computer at the same time? So it's not as big as a, uh, oh, so it's not as big as a supercomputer so as the next one. Which of the following is not an industry that demands huge computation? Kindergartens. So to do level two, you can just log on to your doctor PC and give that a go. Okay, um, let's just read this then. Reading fun. 
The computer has evolved through changes in shape, size, and use. Meanwhile, computer applications have extended to our daily lives, such as programmed home appliances. The progression in computer technology not only improves the performance of uh, appliances, but also brings convenience to us. So which of the devices below are, uh, are computer devices? So a till, yes. The lamp, no. A kettle, no. An e-reader, yes. Okay, and that is it for uh, this lesson. So like I said, you'll have um, uh, this uh, work to complete, um, which is the worksheet and the Google Forms. And then uh, we have the practical, um, the uh, practical typing, which I've also uh, posted.